you just received your second dose of vaccination. Uh, what was the process like for you? Well, so thanks for having me on to talk about this, Christy, because it's really, really important that everyone makes a choice to get vaccinated. I got my first dose of vaccine uh, this past weekend. And you know, now that it's open to everyone who is 16 years or older, it finally reached me. And so I was glad to frankly join the now, you know, more than uh, 6 million people in Michigan who've gotten a vaccine dose. And so uh, this has been something that's been really important to me. You know, my wife as an education worker has been fully vaccinated for a few months now. And I think this is the, the choice that everyone needs to make. So I got an appointment. I went to a community site in the city of Detroit. Uh, and this was really about showing that there's so many different ways to get a vaccine, whether it's you go to a pharmacy, you go to a community site, like I went to a church. Uh, there have been schools that have had vaccine clinics open. I've toured one to Central Michigan universities, so big college campuses. Everyone's really stepping up to do their part because we really need to make sure that as many people in, as possible in Michigan have access to the vaccine. And that's why the governor and I are working every day to get more vaccine in state. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers because we know we have some disparities, especially when it comes to the city of Detroit. I think some of the latest numbers said about 26% of the population of the city, ages 16 and up, have had at least one dose of a, of a vaccine and that's compared to the rest of the state, which is about 44%. Do you think it is hesitancy that we're seeing the difference in these numbers or is it access at this point? Well, we have a lot of work to do, first of all. So let me say that. And the truth is we need to address both of these challenges. You know, the fact that um, people have had questions or, or issues with vaccines in general or with the COVID-19 vaccine specifically, like that's why we established the Protect Michigan Commission, which I chair to try to get all that information and those resources out in a credible way. And we still are gonna to continue to invest in that work as a state. And then with access, I think city leaders, I think leaders across the state are doing everything they can to break down those barriers to access. And we still have work to do there as well. So that's one of the reasons why I went to a community site because I wanted to demonstrate you know, that this was a place that was pretty accessible, a, a neighborhood anchor, frankly, that people are used to going to. And I was proud to see, you know, frankly, a church full of black folks getting vaccinated on Saturday. And, and I think that's the kind of thing that we're gonna need to continue to press access on to make sure that Detroiters can get vaccinated and that Michiganders can get vaccinated. Because I'm still hearing stories that it's complicated for a lot of people. Either they're, they're getting online or they have to try multiple times or they have to go to different sites at different times. And that it is not that easy of a process. What are some of the people telling you, like when you were at the community site at a church, um, about what people's experiences have been and then what they're telling other people? Because again, spreading things by word of mouth or saying, look, this was my story. It wasn't so bad. And this is how I can help you. Yeah, one of the things that's been important is, again, is vaccine supply has increased. We've been able to increase the availability of walk-in appointments at places because you're right. Some people have had challenges navigating, you know, online systems or even text message-based systems. Being able to walk in and get a vaccine dose is really the most optimal format for that for a lot of people. And seeing that coming online in cities like Detroit and other cities across the state, again, I think is an important step forward in making sure that we are making the vaccine as accessible as possible. So I think this is just part of the evolution of the vaccine rollout process. And we're gonna to continue to add more tools. You know, Michigan was a leader and innovator, frankly, in mobile testing and mobile testing in the pandemic. And we've shifted that infrastructure now to provide mobile vaccine units to communities across the state of Michigan, and particularly in Southeast Michigan, where we have vans full of vaccines driving to places and communities, whether it's driving to a sports field, driving to a recreation center, driving to a church, and also being able to vaccinate people that way. So that kind of flexibility is gonna be really critical as making sure that vaccine can meet people where they are. Are you talking to Mike Duggan at all about, is he saying, look, we need more help from the state, or is he saying, look, we've got enough that we need, or what are some of the conversations that are happening uh, between the mayor and, uh, and the governor's office? You know, so we're, we're in communication with, with the mayor's office, as well as with the, you know, the municipal leaders across the state on pretty much a daily basis. I mean, they, you know, we're working together to make sure people can get what they need. And so in the city of Detroit, certainly, uh, they've been pretty aggressive in terms of, again, the types of availability that's been made possible for Detroiters, whether it's walk-in clinics, mobile sites, churches. There were, there were sites at high schools in the past week or so. And so I think they're, they're just wanting to make sure that they have all the tools that they need, and we're going to make sure that they get them. Um, how is it important is it, I guess, to see example, um, to have community leaders come out and, and share their stories of vaccination and help people navigate that? I think that this is one of the most important things. What I've been hearing since the vaccines became available back in December is that people wanted to see not only people who look like them, but people who they know 
get vaccinated. And so as we ramp up the number of people who are getting vaccines and from communities across the state, I think it's going to help because people will see someone they know and they love and they trust who has made this choice and who's doing okay. So, you know, I got my vaccine. My arm was a little sore for the rest of that evening, but I'm good. And as a young, you know, 38 year old black man who's relatively healthy, uh, I thought it was important to do that publicly uh, so that other people who were my peers um, or also family members of my peers could, could see that and make that similar choice. This whole pandemic is about mitigating risk and seeing what we need to do to, to go out and about, what we need to do to protect ourselves and what the risk may be. And in taking the vaccine, we also have to balance the certain risks. When Johnson & Johnson came out and suspended the vaccine so they could look back into some of the incidences, some of the small incidences that have happened after people gotten vaccinated, how detrimental do you think that, that news was to people who are already slightly hesitant about the COVID vaccine versus saying, this is actually the system that worked. If some things happened, it was flagged so we can take a second look. Sure, I, I do think that what happened with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a demonstration about how closely and carefully the vaccine rollout is being monitored by national public health experts by showing, hey, if there's something that, that raised a flag or a question, the ability to take a step back and look at that more deeply is an important characteristic of this system actually functioning as opposed to just letting things go you know, with no sorts of oversight and potentially having problems that we weren't able to address. So yes, that meant we had to retool some of our infrastructure that was dependent upon that one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But nevertheless, I expect that the experts will come back and there's a meeting this coming Friday uh, from the Food and Drug Administration, the CDC and others, where they will make a determination about you know, what the protocols will be for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine going forward. And when that is approved and when it's available, we will add that back to the list of safe and effective vaccines that are available to people in Michigan and all across the country. We're talking about the importance of vaccinations, but people are saying Michigan has the highest rates of COVID now in the country. Why aren't we shutting it down? Why aren't we going back and saying, gosh, we've got to take a two week pause. We're going to halt everything. Your administration has taken a lot of heat for not doing that in the past month. You know, we've asked for people to pause a lot of activity. We've asked for people to not dine indoors. We've asked for uh, indoor sports, for example, to take a pause We've asked for people to, you know, quarantine after coming back if they've taken a vacation or a spring break trip. And so we, we hope that people in Michigan will step up and do the right thing. The truth is we're in a different position than we were in 2020. The question is why? Why are we in a different position right now? And unfortunately, it's because of the politicization, frankly, of the pandemic and the response to the pandemic. We have many fewer tools available to us because the Republicans fought us tooth and nail and frankly took us to court to take away some of those tools that were available to us. And so we're trying to work with what we have it at our disposal and also ask people to, to look at the knowledge that we've and the experiences that we've had over the last year. We know what works. We know masking works. We know being careful in, with indoor gatherings works. And so if we do that, these are things that can help us along with ramping up vaccines to get through not only this increase in cases, but ultimately in the pandemic, which we can do on our terms. We have the capacity and the knowledge to do that. We just need every Michigander to step up and play their part. Lieutenant Governor, it's always good to see you. Thanks for your time. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Absolutely, Christy. Take care. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.